I don't know if you've heard of this old song from long ago, made famous by the Three Dog Night, and it was called One is the Loneliest Number. And then the Beatles had another hit song as well. It was called Eleanor Rigby. And the chorus was all the lonely people, where do they all come from? All the lonely people, where do they all belong? If you think about it, even God does not want to be lonely. God is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. After God created man, this is what he observed. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. During this past year, since last mid-March 2020, as a world, we've been told to shelter in place. In other words, to stay home as much as humanly possible. When any of us became sick with COVID-19, we needed to be in isolation anywhere from 10 to 14 days. And our families and coworkers who had been around us were quarantined. At the holidays, many of us did not travel to be with our families because of our concern of spreading the virus. So out of love for our families and friends, we stayed to ourselves. There's an old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I know that's been very true for me. COVID has helped me learn this, how much I love and miss my family, my church family, and my friends. This pandemic has also helped me to realize that I've needed Jesus to be my main comforter and the bringer of peace. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, the Lord calls Abraham my friend. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, we read that King David was a man after God's own heart. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, it says there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And there's a praise song I love to sing, and it's called, I am a friend of God. And one line is this, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. What does it mean to be a friend? It's for me, it's someone I can trust to be truthful and also someone who will be kind. These are two necessary things for my definition of a friend. I need to be able to depend upon that friend, to be looking after me, to looking out for what's best for me. There's a story about two best friends in the Civil War, and they were in the midst of one of the many bloody battles. And one of the best friends was mortally wounded, and he lay alone out on the battlefield. And the other best friend, who was back behind lines and safe, began to crawl out to his wounded friend. And when he finally reached him and he, he put his dying friend's head in his arms, his wounded friend looked up at him and said, I knew you would come. When Jesus was speaking toward the end of his earthly life to his closest friends, his disciples, he said to this, said this to them, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you obey what I command you. Love one another as I have loved you. Friends, Jesus willingly laid down his earthly life for you and for me. He died on that cruel cross for my sins and your sins. He was innocent, never committed a sin, did not deserve to die. However, he, had he not died for my sins, I would still be in them trying to atone for them. Impossible. I could not atone for all of my sinful thoughts, words, or actions. I would be desperate today and without hope were it not for my totally trusting that Jesus died for my sins. Because Jesus took my punishment upon him, then God declares me not guilty. There are two songs I especially like to remind myself that Jesus is my best friend. 
One is this old hymn called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And one of the lines says, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. The other song is called, Jesus, Friend of Sinners, written by Casting Crowns. And one line in that song says, Let our hearts be led by mercy. Help us reach with open hearts and open doors. O oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. You love every lost cause. You reach for the outcast, for the leper and the lame. They're the reason that you came. Lord, I was that lost cause. I was the outcast. But you died for sinners just like me, a grateful leopard at your feet. None of us needs to be lonely because we have a Savior who wants us to welcome him into our hearts and lives. I promise, I promise you, this will be the best decision of your life when you say, Jesus, I need you. I can't save myself. Come live in and through my life. You are the only reason I have hope for this life and for the gift of eternal life in the next in Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verse 2, Paul wrote, Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Friends, you and I are not meant to keep Jesus to ourselves. We are to reach out to all those who are lonely and share this life-giving truth. Jesus is their best friend forever, too. They just need to ask him into their hearts and lives.